This is KGW News at 11. Hello everyone, welcome to KGW News at 11. I'm Laurel Porter. We made it. We made it to Friday night. Our first full work week under the governor's stay at home orders, although I know many of you have been working at home for longer than that. In the past, Friday night might have been reason to celebrate TGIF. The weekend's finally here. It feels different now with the pandemic gripping the country, the globe really. But I do think we can congratulate ourselves just a little bit on making a difference because everyone is sacrificing in some way. And what you're doing, our health experts tell us, is working. You're flattening the curve and saving lives. In a way, we're all on the front lines, helping our healthcare workers by trying to prevent a surge that would inundate our healthcare system. And here's a reason to be hopeful. The latest data suggests our social distancing efforts are working. That could keep Oregon hospitals from getting overwhelmed with coronavirus patients. If people heed the advice and heed the orders um, in the current executive orders in place in Oregon to stay home to save lives, we will keep people home, we will keep people healthy, and that the number of infections will rise very slowly, and that number would be something that would be able to be taken care of by our hospital partners. Data modeling shows what various scenarios could look like if we went back to business as normal right now. We may have as many as 26,000 cases in Oregon, but aggressive social distancing rules could keep that number as low as 1,000. The number of cases in Oregon jumped to 414 today, but that's to be expected as significantly more people are tested. Washington has 3,700 cases. You just were unprepared. The whole country was unprepared. <laughs> Trying to get better together. A Gresham woman and her husband are fighting what they believe is the coronavirus. Doctors told them as much, though they didn't qualify for a test. The reality for so many people right now. Catherine Cook has their important message as many people question whether or not to stay at home. We're, we're young and healthy and we still got it. From her home in Gresham, 40-year-old Shelly Todd <coughs> shared what life's been like for her and her husband, Jared, since contracting what they believe is COVID-19. This week, doctors recommended they self-quarantine for 14 days. We asked for a test and um, they said they would love to give us one because we have all the symptoms, but we don't match the CDC guidelines for being critical or being admitted. It's the answer so many people are getting. The answer to a question Shelley never imagined she'd ask 11 days ago. That's when her symptoms began after a trip to Seattle. It started with just a headache and I felt pretty good actually for the first three days. And then since then I've had um, high blood pressure, heart problems, chest pain. I, it's really hard to breathe. Shelley and her husband, who was too sick to talk with us, have been to the emergency room three times between the two of them. It kind of goes in a roller coaster form. And one day you feel today is a good day. And there are bad days. And it'll be fine if I just sit still. Like the day she made this video message for a friend. Moved around a little too much today and I can't breathe. Shelley, an esthetician, <coughs> and her husband are small business owners. Their job now is helping each other heal. It's been really difficult for him to move around, um, especially going up and down the stairs. So I've been kind of treating myself and treating him and trying to cook us food and it's, it's been hard. Even if they weren't sick, they wouldn't be working now. Another hard reality. It's not easy to not make money and build debt going to the emergency room because we don't have insurance. But we have no choice at this point. And it's certainly not easy going on TV when you're at your very worst. But for Shelly Todd, sharing this glimpse into her world right now is worth it if it compels others to do the so, right thing. I mean, it just makes sense to stay home. It's, Catherine it's Cook. such an easy thing to do. KGW News. Shelly and Jared, thank you for sharing your story. We hope you get better soon. And now to the financial struggle right now. We told you last week McMinimins was being forced to lay off hundreds of their workers. Today, McMinimins told us it's workers who are on leave. They won't get paychecks as scheduled. 
They'll be delayed until at least Wednesday. In a statement to KGW, McMiniman said, we are doing everything we can to work through these issues as quickly as possible, and we appreciate everyone's understanding. We will be paying all of our employees and will continue to pay the benefits of our temporarily laid off staff. It is a much different story for Powell's. CEO Emily Powell says online book sales are soaring. There have been so many orders. She's rehired more than 100 people with full time benefits. That's fantastic. Just 10 days ago, Emily released a note saying nearly all employees would be let go when Powell's closed its doors. But what a different story now. Today, the massive two trillion dollar federal relief package was passed in the House and quickly signed into law by President Trump. It will send checks of twelve hundred dollars to most Americans, greatly expand unemployment benefits and eligibility and provide billions in support for businesses. The United States has now topped one hundred thousand total coronavirus cases across the country. Today, President Trump invoked the Defense Protection Act directing General Motors to make highly sought after breathing machines, ventilators. The president says American companies will turn out 100,000 of the ventilators in the next 100 days. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he has tested positive for the new coronavirus. His office says he has mild symptoms. He is self-isolating at his London home. Earlier this week, Britain's Prince Charles announced he had tested positive for the virus. You may have heard of them referred to as the unsung heroes. We're talking about long haul truckers. Despite the global pandemic, they're still moving freight across the country, including right here in the Northwest. As Mike Benner shows us, one community in Southwest Washington is stepping up to help the men and women behind the wheel. Ten and a half billion tons. According to the American Trucking Associations, that's how much freight moves across the country annually. Bad weather, road construction, and in this case, the coronavirus does not stop that. There are men and women hard at work, and now they have an extra place to rest and recharge thanks to a community with a big heart. A quick look at I-5 in southwest Washington. With stay-at-home orders in both Washington and Oregon, traffic is lighter than normal, making it easier to spot what sometimes we don't. The semis crisscrossing our region, moving cargo we need now more than ever. Our truckers, I promise you, are doing their dead level best to make sure that the, the food and our supplies are getting to these shelves. In return, Eric Hansen is doing his best to accommodate truckers who may not have access to all of the services they're used to. Hansen teamed up with local leaders and school district administrators in Woodland, Washington to turn the local high school into a temporary truck stop. What I've learned in the last four days about truckers is they're not necessarily used to the general public being that kind. They're kind of our invisible knights on the road and everything like that. If those invisible knights, as Hansen calls them, choose to stop at Woodland High School, chances are they'll be pleased with what they see. We have clean private showers for both male and female. Uh, we have laundry facilities. That is to say we have three washers and three dryers. We have clean restrooms. Um, and we offer food. Hansen says even though spreading the word about the amenities has been difficult, they've welcomed about 10 truckers in the few days they've been open. Kevin from Arlington, Washington was one of them. Kevin uh, is our fifth truck in three days and Kevin's gonna get a much needed shower. So uh, let's take care of Kevin. They're grateful. To, uh, one guy was grateful almost to the point of tears. After all, these men and women of the road are away from their families at a time when most of us are hunkering down with ours. For this reason, Eric Hansen plans to keep the temporary truck stop open for as long as possible. We're in for the long haul, and that's pun intended. We're in for the long haul. For as long as these folks need the service, we'll offer it. Eric says the food they're offering right now is donated, but should the number of truckers increase, he's got a list of restaurants and other places willing to come in and sell food and goods. That'll pump money right back into the local economy. A win-win for everybody. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. What a great thing Eric Hansen's doing. Three cheers for you. Since the spring term starts for Oregon State University's next week, all classes are being held remotely. The universities have been working hard to make the transition to remote classes for their thousands of students. At Portland State University, they have about 3,000 classes that have to make the change. 
PSU, Oregon, and Oregon State have been scrambling to make the change for the spring term and maybe even longer. There will be some students on campus. Dorms remain open for students without other housing options. If you're bored while stuck inside, here's an idea for the weekend. You can virtually connect with seniors isolated from the outside world. Devin Haskins shows us how a senior community has created a way for you to send them some love. We just want to tell you that everything's, everything's going to be okay. okay. And there's people that love you. And there's people that miss you. They can be cute. Howdy. I'm Neighbor Neil. And this is my office. Thanks for joining me today. Or even a little corny. It is actually a very special day. Whatever it is, the goal is to bring a smile to a face that will see this virtual message. It's an idea that those at Marquee Company started when the pandemic shut off senior communities from outside visitors. Marquee CEO, Phil Fogg. We started looking for creative ways to be able to connect our residents and patients to the community, their family, their friends, and, and, and anybody that wanted to really connect. Among those submitting videos is a regular, comedian Wendy Westerwell with quick. her words of wisdom. Um, first of all, what I do is I, I sing when I do my hand washing. She says in these times especially, it's vitally important to never forget those a little more experienced in life than all of us. We look like seniors, but we're not inside. Inside, we're still vibrant and young and have so much to share. Every senior I've ever met has so much to share. All you got to do is ask a question and then sit back and listen. I hope everybody is safe, um, and I hope every um, this will be over soon. I've been more amazed by how much energy it creates for people kind of stuck in their home in a shelter in place or who get to feel like they're doing something that is making a difference. If you'd like to submit your own video, just search for Virtually Vital on Facebook, upload your own video, and who knows whose day you'll brighten. I'm Devin Haskins, KGW News.